jump in. I'm really excited to welcome the Sprig team to the stage. We have two folks joining us, so I'm going to pass it over to them to share intros and get us started. Over to you, Chris and Ning. Hey, everyone. I'm so excited to be here with you all. My name is Chris, um, and I lead the design team here at Sprig. Um, we are a platform for doing quick yet high quality user research. And um, I'm based in New York personally. Previous to joining Sprig for about 10 years, I was a designer at uh, first Google and then at Uber. Ning, you can introduce yourself now. Thanks, Chris. Hi, everyone. My name is Ning. Uh, I lead the product team at Sprig. Uh, so I'm based out of San Francisco prior to joining Sprig. Uh, I also spent time at Uber. Um, I was the product team there, uh, as well as the product team at Zoom. Very excited to be here. All right, so this is what we're going to go over today. I'm going to do a bit of story time about uh, both Sprig and Figma and the history of them and how we have a bit of a common DNA. Um, and then we're going to get into the tactics of how you can test your own design prototypes that you produce in Figma using Sprig. And then we're going to end with questions and answers with you all. So as you have questions, save them up. Uh, we'll address them at the end. OK, so if you're anything like me, um, perhaps you're a designer, uh, you might remember this time when we were all in Photoshop or Sketch and we were working um, individually. You know, I would make up these mock-ups, um, do some different iterations and expirations. And then I might fire an email over to my product manager and be like, hey, I worked on this thing. What do you think? And then uh, Ning would be like, oh, I don't like it. Uh, can you adjust this thing 10 pixels to the left? And then we would fire back some more emails and I might send some more attachments. It was a very like back and forth sort of cumbersome process. And then everything changed in 2015. There was this new uh, tool called Figma that entered the field. Um, if you were anything like me in this moment, you were both excited, but also a little um, hesitant. Um, because I was so used to working individually in um, doing doing design work that it was, it was a little unnerving to think about the idea of like a product manager or an engineer jumping in my file, looking over my shoulder while I'm doing work in progress, um, telling me to do things when you know I, I'm not ready to share them yet. Um, yeah, it, I wasn't really sure what to think about this moment. But fast forward now, it's been about eight years um, and we all work this way and we love it. And we know it's clearly a better way of working. This is a screenshot of recently uh, here at Sprig, we were working between the design team, the product team and the marketing team on updates to our marketing site. And not we were all in the Figma file at the same time. And not only were we commenting back and forth, writing feedback to each other, but we were actually using all of our skills together live editing uh, different variations of the design layout, the text copy. And that's actually how we, um, you know, it made, it made for a more inclusive cross-functional process. It made for a more efficient process and it made ultimately for a higher quality end results. And so in design, this transformation has happened over the past several years, um, kind of brought on by Figma. And we all realized that this is now a better way of working. At Sprig, we are thinking about the same sort of transformation um, happening within the field of user research. So traditionally, you might have a um, sort of separate user researcher or user research team that uh, completely own this idea of like understanding what the user's needs are and then making decisions based on that. Increasingly, with the customers we work with at Sprig, we're realizing a need for teams to work faster, more collaboratively and for everyone to get involved in making user-informed decisions. And so here at Sprig, we believe that user making user-informed decisions is really a team sport. That philosophy guides everything that we do uh, within our products. And so tactically, some things that we offer are one, unlimited seats. That means that if you um, wanna get all your team, your product managers, your engineers, your designers, um, other functions involved in running user research studies, in looking at the results and talking about them together, you can add um, as many people as you'd like from your team to the to Sprig uh, at no additional cost to your company. Second, our own product and design teams, um, Ning and myself, and you know the folks we work with, work really hard to make the product as easy to use as possible, particularly for um, those of us who are not experts about how to do research. And lastly, we have designed the whole product to make it easy to find 
insights for the whole team, no matter what um, function you, you're a part of. So that's a bit about um, the history of Figma and the history of Sprig. And now we're gonna talk about the tactics of how you can use Sprig and Figma together to test your own design prototypes. Uh, we're gonna go through the different steps of the process. And first I'm gonna hand it over to Ning to talk about when you might actually think about testing a design. Thanks, Chris. Uh, so to, in order to answer this question, I would first like to inter introduce a framework. So this is a framework called ZEER. Uh, ZEER stands for Sense, Explore, Evaluate, and Refine. So this is a framework that uh, Sprig worked with you know, many successful product teams, such as Zoom, Google, Dropbox, uh, to really help uh, other product teams to systematically develop a process uh, to collecting and acting on user feedback um, across the entire product development life cycle. So just kind of walk through this framework really quickly. So sense is the uh, stage where you uh, try to identify the problem that you want to solve for. You want to um, kind of identify your North Star metrics, what you want to optimize for. And then this is like many different possibilities here based on your uh, problem that you want to solve. You want to bring some different solutions. Uh, here is where uh, during the explore phase is where you uh, try to get a little bit more in-depth insight uh, in terms of user needs uh, in the problem area that you identify. So you might want to conduct some one-on-one -on -one interviews. Uh, you might want to observe how people interact with your, your, your product, get a little bit more product analytics and eventually develop different hypotheses uh, where you come up with um, different solutions that can solve for uh, your, your, the problem that you identify. So that's where what we call the evaluate phase. Um, so evaluate is, is where you start to kind of like narrow down to a set of prototypes or solutions that you want to like test out um, and continue this flow um, to get the, get more user insights. Eventually, you would want to get to the refine stage uh, is where you would want to ensure you pick the absolutely best solution uh, before you start to building um, that, um, that feature. So when we talk about uh, Tesla design is uh, really comes in in the evaluate phase. Um, so this is a phase that you can test out different concepts uh, to narrow down all the possible solutions that you came up with during the exploration phase uh, so that you can move forward with with a strong conviction. Um, so typically here, what we call evaluate a prototype. Um, so you might want to develop prototypes using Figma uh, and other prototyping solutions uh, to really kind of mimic the product experience that you want to build. So this stage, you don't really need to, uh, you know, hand it off to any engineering effort. Uh, it's less expensive uh, for you to, you know, kind of get more user feedback and de risk uh, some of the product investment uh, before you, you start the build, build phase. And then once you kind of like get more uh, user feedback during the evaluating different prototypes uh, is where we get into the refine phase uh, of this framework. So during the refine stage uh, is where you want to uh, form stronger conviction uh, based on the evaluating stage. Um, so this is where you move forward with uh, a more engineered prototypes uh, to conduct more what we call usability testing. Um, so you can actually use Brick uh, to conduct different usability tests uh, to really observe how people interact with your actual product. Uh, you can see it in action um, and you can like kind of get a, a lot more meaningful feedback based on how they interact with your product. Um, so if there's any like last minute problem to fix, uh, this is the time because you really want to narrow down to that one best possible solution uh, before you're ready to move forward to build and launch. So this is uh, what we think is a really powerful framework um, to really help product teams uh, to kind of align uh, getting, you know, all the user um, feedback along the entire product development lifecycle. Uh, across product managers, user researchers, designers, and everybody involved uh, to really uh, understand how users' insights uh, fit into their product build process. So in order to make it more easily accessible, uh, we actually develop a FigGem template. Uh, I saw a question. We will send the link to, uh, to this template uh, to after this webinar as well. Uh, so this is template is really kind of designed to help you, um, you know, continue to improve uh, your user inform, informed product development uh, process. Uh, we usually recommend a team to kind of meet at a quarterly basis uh, 
across you know product design and research uh, to go through this exercise to identify any gaps and uh, input on it. So now that we know, talk about the framework, uh, we might want to kind of ask ourselves like when to test design. Um, so we develop, we also help develop a set of guiding principles uh, to determine when it's important to test. So first thing first, uh, if what you're building is impacting the core flow of your user experience, then no brainer, obviously you want to uh, conduct really in-depth uh, design testing. And then secondly, if uh, what you, if what you're building is really kind of critical in terms of uh, impacting the success of your launch, uh, then you would want to spend more time in testing. So one example might be uh, if your goal is to improve sign conversion um, rates, then you would want to test out all the different possible solutions to identify the best one uh, that meet your sign up conversion goal. And then the, the third one is uh, if you expect uh, what you're designing uh, would impact, um, it, it's a really difficult process um, and you want to improve the ease of use of that specific process. Uh, so one example uh, here at Sprig, uh, what we identify historically being more difficult is installation. Uh, so you want to install Sprig uh, into your database and start to getting all the events and user behaviors tracked. Um, so we actually spend a lot of time and effort to understand different solution, what would make installation a lot more seamless and self serve and the last thing here is uh, if you are introducing a new change uh, in terms of how people typically accomplish their task, uh, if this is like a change of behavior feature, uh, this will also be extremely important to test to make sure um, if we anticipate any difficulties to, uh, of users might react to this specific change. So on the flip side, you might also use, ask yourself when we don't want to test. Uh, so this is relatively straightforward. Uh, if what you're developing is already an in industry best practice, uh, one example is where should we put the search bar? Um, so industry best practice is put search bar on top. So that might not be uh, a kind of a, a design that you want to spend too much time on testing. And then the second one is uh, if you test, what you're testing is just a matter of preference. Uh, so what we usually talk about is food preference. If someone prefer chocolate or vanilla, or if someone prefer a different color, blue or pink. So those are really subjective preference uh, Then we would not uh, recommend uh, conducting testing on those areas. So now, uh, once you identify uh, when to test, how to test, whether to test, then it's important to set up a uh, prototype that is easy to test. Uh, so to, to do so, I would actually hand it over back to Chris to walk through how you might want to use Sprig uh, to, to conduct a prototype test. Thanks, Thing. So we're gonna do a bit of demo uh, and I'm gonna start off in uh, Figma. Um, so this is what you're seeing right now is, is an actual um, project that we, we are working on right now in the Sprig team, uh, particularly a uh, designer on the team named Angela has produced these lovely mocks and a prototype. Um, you can see the different noodles here of uh, what we call the community gallery. So to give you a bit of context here, the community gallery project, uh, the premise here is you know, Sprig, we have um, a bunch of lovely customers who are using our product for all sorts of different types of um, research and gathering feedback from their users. And they're all using it in pretty different and interesting ways that um, we, we don't always, you know, anticipate. And so we're trying to facilitate um, our customers being able to share best practices with each other, especially for those who are, um, who, who have tried Sprig quite a lot to share it with those who are newer to Sprig. And so our goal here is to uh, sort of curate this community um, set of, of use cases and templates that we can all use together to make better product decisions. Um, and so where we are with the project right now is we have a general concept. We have some, some like rough mocks here, but we're still trying to hone in on whether um, our solution is the right one and develop conviction around it. So um, I'm going to hit the present button here and show you how this prototype that we set up works. It's a fairly um, simple Figma prototype. So we have this homepage here of the community gallery. 
And then we have one use case that we built out uh, a detail page for. So you can hit this build a product led funnel use case. And it shows a few different templates that we can click through. And then it has um, some description text about how uh, we have used these different types of studies in our own process. And that is the prototype. So you might have a similar prototype when you're at this phase of doing a concept testing. You know, it's not fully built out. You're not uh, necessarily optimizing everything yet, but you're trying to gain some high level of conviction. So uh, this is the stage where I want to set up a, take this prototype and set it up in Sprig as a concept test. So I'll show you just how to do that. First, we want to go back to the, um, the entry point that we want the user to start at in the prototype. So that for us, that's the community gallery homepage. And now I'm going to go over to the top right of this, the Figma UI. You can see the share prototype button. Um, and then before I get into that, I'm going to show you if you're not familiar, Figma has a variety of different sizing um, approaches here to fit your prototype into the screen size. This is really important when, especially you're gonna be sharing this prototype with a set of uh, user testing participants. Um, the right method kind of varies based on the type of prototype that you have, but I'll just kind of flip between them and show you how they work. Um, you can use the Z key to do that. So you, you can do fit to screen where it kind of, um, scales it down, uh, you can do fit with, and you can do fill screen. For this particular prototype where um, it's like a scrollable view, we found that the best um, solution is fit with, but you'll wanna play around a little bit based on your prototype. So I'm gonna set it to fit with, and then I'm gonna hit share prototype up here. Um, there's a few different ways you can do this. So you wanna make sure that your external participants can view the prototype, but probably not like your full design file. And so, um, Sometimes at Figma, there is a setting to do uh, share just your prototypes externally. In this case, what I've done is I've actually split out the prototype into a separate file. Um, and so I just want to make sure that anyone with the link can view this prototype file. And now I'm going to hit copy link. And we're going to, in a moment, paste that over into Sprig. So um, in my browser, I'll go over to Sprig. This is what the Sprint dashboard looks like. I'm gonna size down my screen so you can see it a bit better maybe. Um, and so you can see, I, I have a couple draft studies here. I'm gonna hit create a new study. Uh, as I mentioned previously, at Sprig, we're really trying to make um, conducting research studies as easy as possible for um, those of us who are not deep research experts. And so we do have deep research experts on our team who have developed um, a set of over 75 different templates that you can use to bootstrap your own studies based on best practices. You can see a variety of different um, surveys and concept tests that Sprig supports here. So we support research on your live product through surveys and research on uh, prototypes that you might make through Figma uh, through the concept test. And so in our case, we're gonna choose concept testing here. You can see a few different templates. Um, if I had a couple different concepts for the, this feature, I might want to share multiple prototypes and have users compare them. So that would be this one. If I had um, an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement, I could attach that here um, and have users sign that before they are able to view my prototype. In my case, I'm just gonna go with a simple tested product pro, uh, concept templates. And actually in a few moments um, for some fun, uh, I'm gonna show you how to do this. And then I'm gonna share the prototype with you all in the Zoom chat. So you can actually take the live, um, the live test. So when we click into the template here, we get a preview of how it works. This um, area up here, you can customize with your own brand logo or name. Um, you can see a preview of the different questions we ask here. And then this is an example of um, when you attach the Figma prototype, what it's going to look like. Um, we'll give this a moment. If my internet is working okay, basically a prototype with a Figma prototype would load to the side here. Yes, this is uh, a sample of what that would look like. And so um, I can get a sense of what the template looks like, and then I can hop in with use this template. This is what the question editing screen looks like. So I can take a moment to review the different questions and how they're set up. And then I can get to editing it to how I need. 
In my case, um, as I mentioned, I'm looking to just do a simple uh, test example for us in the Zoom chat today. So I'm actually going to delete these first couple questions, which are around uh, just like kind of how you use um, whatever we have, whatever solution in the problem area currently. So I'm going to delete these first couple questions just to save us some time. And then uh, we have an introduction um, prompt here, which I'm going to edit and provide a place uh, edit the placeholder and provide a description of what we're testing today. So we're working on an idea for a feature that could help with setting up user research studies. And then I'm going to um, write Sprigs Community Gallery uh, collects best practice use cases and templates from Sprigs customers. The next few questions you'll see have this add prototype uh, field uh, filled out with a sample prototype. And for so for these, I need to go in and uh, paste that link for, that I copied from Figma previously and replace it. There's a few of these where I'm going to paste. Um, at Sprig, we recommend that you keep your uh, your user test like fairly short uh, to give users the highest likelihood of actually completing them. And so you may start to think like, oh, there's kind of a lot of questions here. But um, if you look a bit more closely, what we've set up here is uh, what we call skip logic. So the idea here is we ask an, uh, a starter question, this question three, about how valuable would it be for you to, if we created a feature like this? And depending on whether they gave a low or a high answer, we're gonna direct the user to either um, what do you like about this feature or why wouldn't a feature like this be valuable to you? And then regardless of which question um, you get here, then you're gonna get after the, how could we change this feature to be more, more valuable to you? So that is gonna allow our team to go back and get both sort of a quantitative sense of user sentiment around this feature, but then also a qualitative um, sort of open text response answer of the ways that we could iterate on it and make it better. So after reviewing, uh, setting this up, I can preview the study. This is what it looks like. Um, you're actually gonna take this in a moment. So I'm not gonna spoil the whole thing, but um, you can see how I've set up my prototype now and it's sitting nicely next to a set of questions. And when I am done, I'm gonna hit uh, continue to audience here. This takes us to the audience screen where we can choose how you wanna distribute the study. Um, I'm go actually gonna go through these different methods in a moment, so I'm not gonna go as in depth right now, but for now I'm gonna hit share full link. And then I will hit launch the concept test. And you can see I get back this link. I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna go over to the chat. And I'll type in take our prototype test. Um, so going back to our slides here, I'm actually going to give you two minutes uh, to take a look at this and uh, actually try it out yourself. Uh, this is this the purpose. This is twofold. Um, we want you to try out what a spring prototype test looks like. But then this is actually a real product that we're working on in our design team right now. So selfishly, I would love any and all feedback that you all could provide on this feature because we're going to take it, review it, and actually uh, act on anything you know that's useful in there. So please take our prototype test, and I will check back in in two minutes.
All right, this is admittedly an abbreviated time for you to go through it, but we're going to keep rolling. And if you're still wrapping up, uh, provide feedback there, um, feel free to do so. After you set up your prototype test, um, the next uh, decision point that you have to go through is choosing who to actually test with. Let's talk through some of the methods there. As you saw um, when I just demonstrate it right now. Um, after you set your prototype test, you get back a link. And so it's kind of up to you to choose um, how you're going to distribute that. And Sprig supports a variety of different methods. Um, we tried a bunch ourselves and uh, have a few thoughts on them that I'm going to share with you. So first off, um, a fairly unique capability of Sprig is that you can do in-product recruiting. So we have a whole other uh, type of product called in-product surveys that you can use to run um, surveys on your live product, gauge sentiments about how your live product is working. And so check that out. Uh, but you can also use an in-product prompt to link out to your prototype test. So this is really cool about like, let's say I, um, I'm working on this community gallery project and it, you know, how it works is that we're gonna start introducing community uh, submitted templates to the Sprig experience. But we, as I showed you previously, we have an existing template experience that's all built by Sprig. So I might wonder um, how would users of the existing templates perceive the new community templates? And for that, I might wanna inter inject a, in the live product as the user is going through the template experience, they're engaging with it. I might wanna ask them, would you be willing to uh, participate in this shorts uh, prototype test for the new version of community templates. So in park recruiting is really powerful when you wanna target specific user behaviors. For example, um, they're clicking through the template gallery. Uh, if you wanna target specific user characteristics, for example, uh, maybe we only wanna target people on our paid plan or people who have uh, used the products for more than 10 sessions. Um, so you can do some very fine grained targeting depending on how you set up your, your spring environment. And you can capture feedback in the moment as they're using perhaps a live version of the, the future product that you're iterating on. Second, um, you might consider an email distribution method. So um, you might have an existing email list, you might create a new one, and then you might send out your, uh, your survey by email. This is a great method when you want to target turned or unengaged users or otherwise people who wouldn't be showing up in your live product experience. Um, it's also great if you uh, have a really like sort of sensitive, critical journey in your product experience you want to get insight on. And so you want to like keep that as streamlined as possible. You don't want in product prompts coming up. Um, and lastly, uh, because um, with in product research, um, you do need to kind of keep the questions fairly, um, fairly brief because people have shorter attention spans there. Email, if you have longer, uh, you have needs for longer, longer surveys and longer prototype tests. That can be a, a great method for asking more questions. Uh, Slack is um, an interesting method that we've been trying out in the Sprig team. Uh, I'll say it's a bit more experimental, but you know we are a biz business um, company ourselves, and so we have a live Slack channel set up for all of our different customers. So if, if you were to join Sprig, actually, you'd get. Um, a, a dedicated Slack channel with your with our uh, great customer success team, and we provide live support in there for you know best practices for using Sprig. And so sometimes we actually want to target specific customers that we think you know maybe they've used um, the feature that we're iterating on, um, and we want to get firsthand feedback from them. So we might slip into that Slack channel, provide a message about like this is what we're working on. Please take this quick prototype test. Um, it allows us to really find target the, the customers we're talking to and uh, manage how that customer relationship is going. A lot of our customers who we do this with actually really love um, having like a direct line to the product team and engaging and seeing preview concepts. So it's a fun way to do that as well. Um, another approach we, we've tried uh, that was quite interesting is using social media. So um, here recently we were iterating on our marketing site through a prototype test. And so I took to Twitter and sent it out to uh, my audience there. This was a great approach for getting a diverse set of opinions. So in this case, we got um, feedback from folks who maybe were less familiar with Sprig of the product, but were familiar with design and technology. And um, it also allowed us to sort of build in public and sort of like open the garage door on what we're building, engage people that way. Lastly, um, 
there might be times when you want a panel, uh, a panel of people who have signed up to take uh, like these sorts of user tests in, in exchange for a financial incentive. These are people who are like really used to taking user tests and provide feedback uh, from a place of familiarity with that experience. Um, so here at Sprint, we partnered with a great uh, panel provider partner called User Interviews. And we built a really seamless integration between Sprint and User Interviews so that you can take your Sprint prototype test um, easily in one click over User Interviews. In User Interviews, you can choose the type of um, participant that you want. Maybe it's like uh, a civic demographic, like you want to get architects who are between uh, the ages of 30 and 50 um, who live in a certain area of the world. Uh, so you can do that. And then user interviews will manage the distribution of a financial incentive to, as they take the test. You might want to consider this when you want to intentionally uh, target people who are unfamiliar with your products. Or um, if you are entering a new market, your existing target audience is not the appropriate one. You want to get into a new uh, sort of audience. Or lastly, you might want to do this if you want to understand perception of your competitors. Um, you could actually intentionally distance your test from being branded as your company and uh, apply as more like sort of generic uh, lead branded um, uh, question. And this is a great approach to doing that. So those are all the different approaches that uh, we support at Sprig and have used in different situations. And it's up to you to decide uh, what might be best based on the, the needs of your team um, in your phase of testing. Uh, now I'm gonna turn it over to Ning. As you get all those different insights rolling in, how can you turn them into action in your product? Awesome, thanks for the great demo, Chris. Um, so now let's take a look at the uh, results. Uh, I know many of you guys asking how does the results uh, will be displayed at Sprig. So let's take a look at that. Refresh screen maybe. Apologies for my internet connection. All right, y'all, you know what they say about live demos. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can see if I can find it. Oh, there we go. So this is uh, as break, uh, this is the result screen. Uh, so you can go to studies and you can drill down to each of the study uh, to take a deeper look into um, the feedback that you gather. Um, so Chris, if you scroll down, so uh, here is kind of like a chart view. You can also like switch between uh, a bar chart and the pipe chart and different view uh, to kind of like get a little bit more kind of insights in terms of um, what you're receiving. So this is like really easy uh, for you to kind of like consume uh, all the responses as well. So these are all the text response that came in just now. Awesome. So you can drill down to each of the questions or you can pin a specific uh, charts to your dashboard. So for example, if you're tracking um, a, a feature satisfaction, uh, you can pin to your dashboard, which you can easily uh, kind of view the results for that feature as well. Awesome. So now let's kind of talk a little bit more in terms of um, how you want to use these insights and turn into action. Um, so first thing, uh, like what Chris mentioned before, uh, we really want to make sure the user experience is very easy. So uh, what Chris demo earlier is uh, very easy to launch a concept uh, and prototype test. Uh, but we also want to make sure from an end user experience standpoint is very easy for them to navigate the prototype and provide feedback. So you all uh, took this test earlier, and hopefully that was also a really easy experience for you uh, to provide 
provide your feedback for, uh, on the product features that we are developing. So we truly believe, uh, as Brick here, we truly believe uh, easy user experience equals more responses, faster responses, and higher quality responses. Um, so, you know, by launching um, a study quickly, you can get, you know, faster, better, and more response. Uh, seems almost too good to be true. Uh, but once you get all these uh, great responses, uh, oftentimes what the product team would need to do is to snip through some of these open test responses one by one one, right? Um, so what Chris just showed, uh, there were uh, over 200 open text responses, people provide their thoughts. Um, so we, as Brick here, we developed a AI analysis uh, where you no longer need to like skim through all these like uh, open text responses, hundreds and hundreds of them. Instead, uh, we have a award-winning AI technology uh, to group everything into themes uh, and uh, sentiment as well as recommendation. Uh, so here, um, for example, uh, if someone, if the key feedback is not enough feature, you can quickly kind of like um, get all those like thematic uh, feedback instead of, uh, instead of like going through the response one by one. And uh, we also really believe in uh, making, you know, these insights easily digestible across different teams. Uh, so that's why we continue to invest in native integrations uh, with tooling that PMs and designers love. Uh, so for example, we have native uh, Slack integration. Uh, we are investing in a uh, integration with Notion, FigJam. So uh, this is where we want to make it super easy uh, for the entire product team to interact uh, with the insights. Uh, so that they can bring some different ideas, more concepts, uh, and design tweaks uh, using these user-informed feedback. Uh, because you, we really don't want you collect all these like great feedback, but not translate into uh, the product. And lastly, what is coming soon, a uh, little teaser. Uh, so also kind of preview of our FigJam integration, uh, which is coming soon this quarter, uh, which will allow you to like embed live uh, charts that we saw earlier in the studies page, uh, as well as any video recording. Uh, you can preview uh, different prototype studies uh, in the FigJam natively as well. Awesome. So yeah, so this is really our mission, uh, like what Chris kick off the, the webinar with, uh, making user informed decision uh, for the entire product team. Uh, so like we said, we want to make it really easy for everyone to use, uh, sign up for Sprig and even start using the product uh, without paying for it. Uh, so you can actually get started using the product today uh, by signing up for the free plan. Uh, I saw some of the chat here saying you already tried the free plan. So I would encourage everyone to sign up uh, because in the free plan, you can uh, you can get one prototype test per month uh, as well as one shareable link survey per month as well. Uh, if you want to, you know, get a little bit more in-depth uh, live demos uh, with the team, really kind of understand how we uh, do event-based targeting to launch in product survey. Uh, also, we are open to, uh, we are here to uh, help you book a um, uh, demo with our product specialist. So that's all the presentation. I think we're actually going to, Clara, if you're oh, able yes. to... Uh do a poll on anyone who would like to follow up the live demo. Yes, and, uh, let's go ahead and push that poll. And to be clear, yeah, we have um, the free plan for, um, you know, you can get one test per month to try it out. Um, and it offers this prototype testing capability that we just went through. Sprig also offers a variety of different other uh, types of quick uh, and powerful user research, including uh, really powerful in-product surveys functionality, which we didn't go as in depth today on. But you can get a, a great live demo on that and consider it for your team uh, if you book the demo. Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, we have a bunch of questions, but first I just wanted to say thank you for coming on here today. I loved the framing around de-risking and just like decreasing risk as you're thinking about gathering insights and testing your work. Let's go ahead and jump into q and I've pulled in a bunch, so thank you to our audience for um, adding in your questions. There are quite a few, so we'll just jump into it. Um, I started with sort of the more technical questions about the tool specifically, and then um, we'll move into broader questions later. Does Sprig have a heat map feature from Edgar? Yep, we I'm do not currently. Oh, yeah, then go for it. 
Yep, uh, it's definitely uh, one of the most popular requests uh, that we're hearing. Uh, we are currently, uh, we don't have heat map feature currently, uh, but we'll continue to evaluate whether we should add heat map um, as a feature. Awesome. Next up, Taylor asks, can concept testing be done on mobile devices with mobile prototypes? Uh, this is also a second most popular request. Uh, we could support uh, mobile prototypes, but currently we don't support uh, taking the concept test using a mobile device. Got it. Another question from Taylor, to conduct a concept test in product, do you need to set up a second sprig to recruit users in product? That's correct. Uh, so like what Chris mentioned earlier, uh, uh, you would need to set up a in-product survey uh, to recruit uh, based on the specific user types that you want to recruit for that proto, uh, for the concept test. Very cool. Krishna asks, so the demo is sort, so the demo y'all showed earlier is some sort of asking the users to answer a certain question. Is there a way where we can ask the user to perform a task over the prototype and observe how they accomplish the tasks and what struggles they face? Yeah, I can take this one. Um, so we didn't get to demo it today uh, at an interest of time, but yeah, this is actually exactly um, a type of question that we do support, um, which are called record tasks, which is the ability for you to um, have the user engage with the prototype and then mm -hmm. record their screen um, as they're doing it. And often we pair this with um, a video or audio response. So they, it sort of simulates the, um, the environment of a live moderated test. You know, if you've ever done sort of think aloud process where they engage with um, a prototype and then they're thinking aloud as they're, they're uh, what they're thinking. Um, we, we basically support that. Um, you sh it's really easy for the user. They just have to share their browser tab and you mm -hmm. can see a video recording of what they're doing. Oh, nice, very cool. So a question for Chris, specifically from Justin, I see you ran a website design test with marketing right when you started at Sprig. How did you keep marketing design dev and product managers up to date with concepts and prototype builds? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I think that's, it's it's a, a really a testament to like the power of the, um, the partnerships and the seamless like kind of integrations between all these different tools. So, I mean, here at Sprig, we use Sprig ourselves for doing the testing part of things. We also use Figma for doing the prototypes and designs and collaboration. Uh, and then we make a great use of Slack um, to, you know, communicate and in general keep like sort of a change log of what we're working on. So mm -hmm. the combination of those tools kind of work together for us in our process. Yeah, awesome. Um, an anonymous question, how do you recruit participants to test prototypes? Um, I think this touches on sort of the, the different methods that I went over earlier. So you might have your own user base, either in your product or maybe an email list or something like that. And if so, um, you might consider targeting that type of user. Mm -hmm. Alternatively, um, you could make use of something like a panel um, to get a more general set of uh, folks to. Yeah. Totally. Akshay asks, how many active customers do you think one needs before we start using surveys? As it feels like this would be really useful for mass customers, but we really only have around 50 active users. Yeah, this is a great question. Um, so I guess it all depends on uh, who you want to survey, right? If you want to survey your 50 active users, uh, I think using uh, the prototype test and concept test will still be really helpful for them to kind of go through the different features and observe how they interact with the prototypes and the products. Um, and on top of that, like what Chris demo earlier, uh, you can also integrate with user interview. Uh, so if your goal is to survey outside of the 50 the active users uh, using a dedicated panel. Uh, you can also use Brick for that. Uh, so it really kind of comes down to, you know, what, what kind of users you want to survey. Uh, mm -hmm. And lastly, if you want to survey the website, uh, that would be, you know, more than just the 50 active, active users. Yeah, totally. Thanks for that question. Carrie asks, what do you do if the testing insights are conflicting? 
That's also a great question. Uh, so usually when you get uh, really conflicting uh, insights, uh, you know, opposite of the spectrum, uh, what we usually do is to set up follow up studies. Uh, so you can continue to use a more uh, quantitative method, you can launch a new mm -hmm. uh, sprint survey to understand them a little bit better, or you can follow up with a moderated test. Uh, so you can interview uh, with users that provided uh, very different insights uh, to get to drill down into uh, the specifics uh, of the, the feedback. Yeah, that's a good one, Carrie. From Izzy, how does product concept testing differ from prototype usability testing? I can take this one. Um, so the uh, we, we could debate the semantics of it, I'll say, but I think how, how we like to think about it at Sprig is that the overall umbrella is um, what we support is the ability to test a prototype. Um, so you have a Figma prototype, you wanna pair a set of questions with it. Now, the ways you can use that are um, concept testing and usability testing. There's a little bit of gray area between them, but in general, how we think about concept testing is um, you might, you're, you're earlier in that stage. So what we call um, evaluate in this, this year framework. So you're trying to hone in on what is the right solution among you know, all the different solutions you have to this problem and gain conviction on the general direction. And then usability testing, we think of more as like, you have a solution set and you're trying to make it as easy to use as possible. So you're trying to find all the different uh, pain points where a user might get confused and eliminate those. Um, I will say there's, you know, in reality, it's a little bit gray between them, but that's how we think about the, the different categories of tests here. Yeah, totally. Thank you for the question, Izzy. I think we've got a couple more. Another one from Carrie, if you have no existing customers, how do you find the correct people? I think we sort of touched on it earlier, similar to like recruiting folks and that process. Can you speak a little bit more to that side of the um, process and journey? Yeah, so I think the most common thing, uh, way to recruit uh, people before you have existing customers is you build, you can find a panel uh, using user interview. Um, so you can kind of like do a screening uh, based on who you think your target personas are, uh, what type of uh, firmographic, demographic uh, that you want to um, um, survey from, then you can uh, do that screening uh, and mm -hmm. then you can use that to um, identify a set of people. Uh, I would say another uh, tactic that we have experienced before is you actually run a test on the website uh, and you can actually ask uh, some sort of like demographic information uh, from the website uh, where you can get, you know, the most traffic. Uh, and then from there, you can slowly to kind of identify uh, based on their firmographic, uh, what type of how, uh, what different behaviors or different answer or insights that you would get. Um, so I think all those uh, can also be done using uh, Sprig and our analysis as well yeah awesome. i'll add in here i think a couple other methods to consider for like a, a pre-release uh product like this that i think would be interesting one mm -hmm. is like the sort of social media twitter approach that we tried where if you have an audience you can build up uh, of people who are like you know you are excited about this product that you're developing even if it's not released yet yeah uh, that's a great audience to engage in in testing with sprig and then another one is similarly like if you can get people onto maybe a landing page, get them signed up for a newsletter, you can run an email survey with them. Yeah, totally. I love that. I think this might be our last question. I'll try to pull in more in the Q&A because um, we have a few more minutes. Anthony asks, is it possible to leverage this feature to do A-B testing or would they need to be two separate studies? Uh, great question. Uh, also a little bit product teaser. Uh, we actually building uh, integration with some of the A-B testing toolings, uh, such as LaunchDuckly uh, and all that. So eventually uh, we will support uh, A-B testing uh, and you would need to set up two separate studies uh, based on the different uh, control versus testing cohort uh, to get um, more A-B testing results. Got I'll, it. I'll, add, I'll add some more here because uh, depending on what you mean, Anthony, uh, I mean, I, I think there's two different ways to interpret this question. So one is if, if you're running like a live AB experiment uh, with like one of those example uh, tools that Nick mentions, um, a technique that uh, we like many of our customers use at Sprig is to actually like run, for example, like evaluation surveys on both A and B uh, experiences. So you can evaluate like how people are processing each one, compare them, and get qualitative data on that in addition to quantitative. Um, 
However, if, if you're more interested in like the prototype testing that we talked about today, um, if you're like wanting to test two pre-release like sort of prototypes against each other, you could just incorporate both prototypes into one test. Um, I showed a template of that earlier where like it was test two concepts against each other. Um, and so you just put both Figma prototypes in there as different questions and you have to walk through and compare. So depending on what you mean, you know, we have different approaches for each one. Awesome. Okay. So I know there are more, I, I brought in as many as I could before we ended the presentation. I'll pull one more. Um, how does Figma and Sprig integrate? I know you demoed that piece where you pasted in the URL. Was there anything else to mention in terms of the integration? No, uh, we, we aim to make it as easy as possible. Just pick your prototype uh, from Figma into Sprig. Um, and do the work on the back end just so that it like sets up properly. Uh, that's that's the integration. Um, and I'll pull in one more. What level of analysis do we get on the text responses? Yeah. So um, if you're wondering actually why we didn't see that when we went to the live demo, it does take um, about a day or a couple of days to get that uh, those that theme analysis back, and that's because we use AI to bootstrap it, but we also have like a human in the loop to ensure that it's high quality uh, theme analysis mm -hmm. for your team. So um, that's why we don't have it instantly available like for this live demo right now. Uh, but what you get after that is, uh, we showed a little preview of it. You get back a list of themes um, extracted for each open text question that you have, and you get a recommendation about like the severity level of uh, how urgent it is to address. Awesome, very cool. Well, I think that's all we have time for today. Thank you for submitting your questions. Thank you for taking the time to answer them. Before we close out, a few things to call out. We did push that Zoom poll just now. So please take um, some time to answer that one question. The Sprig team would love that. Second, if you dialed in later, have no fear. We'll include any links that we shared during the talk, as well as the recording in a follow-up email later this week. If you enjoyed today's live stream and you want more, you can always find future events over at figma.com forward slash events, or if you want to watch previous live streams, you can find them at our YouTube channel. And lastly, if there are any topics you want to hear about in future live streams, we're always available at community at figma.com. So don't hesitate to reach out. That's all from us. Thank you to Ning and Chris, and thank you all for spending time with us. We'll see you next time. Bye.